Oh yes! What you guys will see and learn in this video is pretty epic, beautiful, intense, and graphic. We ant keepers often tend to also share a lot of love for other creatures, great and small, cute and odd. The ant room has been completely silent this week, with no major events in the antiverse to update you guys on, to create our usual ant videos. So this week, I asked you guys what you wanted to see, and you, the AC family, voted to see my team of critters. Some of them may interest you, some adorable, and others terrifying. They share my space and that of the ants, and I am super excited to show you Introducing the rest of my animal comrades in full 4K Ultra HD resolution. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC fam. Enjoy. Now ants have always been my main obsession, especially since moving to the Philippines from Canada in 2011, due to the ant abundance in this tropical corner of the world. But aside from the ant kingdoms you've come to know on this channel, there are other beasts who also share my time, space, and love. Just a warning though, some of the footage in this video may disturb you, but I will give ample warning before these scenes come up, so you can close your eyes and simply listen. I will also go over a bit about their care, maintenance, and biology. I also can't wait to introduce you to my newest animal child. Keep on watching till the end. So let's start from the smallest beasts and make our way to the biggest. If you've seen some of our past videos on this channel featuring my paludarium style half water half land and terraria, you may have deduced by now that I love fish. AC family, I am pleased to introduce to you my garden, aquatic garden that is. Welcome to my freshwater community fish tank. Let me show you around my neat underwater forest. Take a look at all that lush vegetation. Some people aren't really a fan of the chaotic look, but I personally love it. Here's some Ludwigia repens from North and Central America, Anubias from Africa, and Red Amazon Swords and Sagittaria from South America. You may have seen this tank from a previous video, where I harvested some Sagittaria which now grows on the river floor of the Selva de Fuego. Some cute baby Java moss has even begun to grow naturally from the driftwood. It is a 75 gallon biospace, whose plants even grow and flower out of the water. I believe the success of the plants in this tank have been due to the ample lighting, the provision of CO2 for plant support, and of course, the abundance of delicious fish poop fertilizer. Speaking of which, let's meet our gorgeous finned poopers now, shall we? Here you will see a school of dwarf rainbow fish, endemic to West Papua in Indonesia. I love these fish because they have lasted over two years, school beautifully, eat a lot, and change colors depending on where they are in the tank, according to lighting. In the shady parts, the fish appear orangish, but in the light, they shine a metallic blue color. You will also notice a pair of Ruminose tetras, native to South America, swimming around. This pair has also lived quite long and are actually quite interesting in that their bright red heads turn pale and skin colored when water quality is bad. They're actually like canaries in a cave for fish keepers, warning that the water quality is bad and a water change is indeed needed immediately. The true stars of the show, however, are these two gorgeous angelfish native to South America. Of course, these fish were bred for their color as the natural color phase of these cichlids does not look like this. But I love the black and platinum contrast between this pair. Their names are Ying and Yang. They're best friends and literally inseparable in the tank. I've had these two for over two years. I love watching them floating around foraging for food and hidden goodies. For cleanup crew, I have a school of these diminutive autosynclus catfish, native to South America, which feed on algae on the plants, as well as this Chinese algae eater and this rambunctious Siamese algae eater, native to mainland Southeast Asia. The entire system runs on an automatic timer, controlling the photo period, i.e. the duration that the lights are on, 
as well as the addition of carbon dioxide, which completely shuts off at night when plants aren't photosynthesizing as much. Due to there being no light, the tank is filtered via a Sharuba canister filter. But to be honest, judging from the vitality of the plants, it seems the plants are also carrying a lot of the load at eating up all the toxic nitrogenous compounds produced by the fish's waste. I treat this entire fish tank like a single interdependent system balanced and self-dependent, a system which took three years to establish. All I need to do is a 25% water change once a week and feed the fish once a day. On stressful days, I love to watch this tank and lose myself in an almost hypnotic trance as the fish swim about in seemingly slow motion. The colors, movement, and vitality of life within the aquarium really relaxes me. How about you guys? Do you find watching fish relaxing? But now AC family, we move on to some creatures that bring about in many people a completely opposite reaction. First, many of us ant keepers also happen to be fans of spiders. Arachnophobes, cover your eyes, breathe deeply, and just listen to my voice. I have always been fascinated with spiders, and I would probably also go so far as to say that in my books, Spiders come in a close second to ants, as far as invertebrate pets go. In our video, Ants vs. Spiders, you may have met Imelda, the goddess of the Antiverse, my kluge bird-eater tarantula, scientifically known as Lassiodora kluge. She is named after a former Philippine first lady, Imelda Marcos, who was famed for her vast collection of shoes. Get it? Many legs, many shoes. Okay, bad joke. Speaking of legs though, she has a whopping eight inch leg span. An absolutely massive juggernaut of a spider. Pieces of cockroach exoskeletons from previous meals lay scattered beneath her, incorporated into her silk flooring. Time to add to the floor work. AC family, it's feeding time. Let's offer her this live roach. Tossing it in, and seized. With her two sharp fangs, she pierces into the roach and injects a cocktail of toxins and acids, which reduce the roach over time into a nutritious mash, which she sucks up. At this point, with her pair of spinnerets, she starts to carefully lay down a fresh bed of silk, an effective method at keeping ants and other creatures that may be drawn to the smell of her fresh kill away. Check her out, AC family. Isn't she gorgeous? I love her distribution of hair against her velvety body. Actually, here's a neat fact. Tarantula hair is actually not technically hair, as they don't grow from follicles, like our hair. The correct term for tarantula hair is setai, extensions of the exoskeleton. Interesting, right? Now, despite her menacing appearance, you may be surprised to know that in the five years that I've owned her, she has been completely non-aggressive. She's never attempted to bite me and not a single threat pose. I don't take that track record lightly, however, and never attempt to touch her. Actually, with New World Tarantulas, like Amelda here, who hails from Brazil, aside from those sharp fangs, what you really want to watch out for are their tiny urticating hairs, actually setai, which line their abdomen. These defensive hairs are kicked up into the air in a cloud and are specially designed to irritate mucous membranes like the inside of your nose or throat. It's an effective defense against birds, mammals, reptiles, or amphibians, which may look at this gargantuan spider as a meal. Thankfully, this bird eater, however, hasn't even kicked hairs at me, which I don't take for granted. I respect her greatly. Her venom isn't strong enough to kill a human, unless, of course, you're allergic to the venom. But I've been bitten by another tarantula before, and believe me, it hurts like crazy and swells pretty bad for a few hours. Lucky for us, we aren't that roach. Overall, she has been an amazing pet, very low maintenance, eating roaches only once a week, and has caused me many delightful moments of spider watching. She's a big fuzzy teddy bear with fangs and urticating hair. All right, arachnophobes, you may open your eyes now. Ophidiophobes, you may now close your eyes. Because speaking of feeding time and predation, it just so happens, AC family, that another beast awaits to be fed. A beast 
that like Imelda, is highly feared by many. Meet Valentino, my gorgeous four and a half year old, adult male, Sonoran Green Tree Python, native to the jungles of New Guinea, Indonesia, and parts of Australia. Just look at his gorgeous coloration. He's an emerald green with a yellowish underside with blue, yellow, and white specks running down along his spine. And those hypnotic serpentine eyes are just so striking, it blows me away every time I see him. Green tree pythons are a nocturnal arboreal species of snake, always wrapping around branches, sleeping in the day, and exploring by night. He does wake up early, however, once a week, right before sunset on feeding day. And that is now. AC family, for those of you who may be rodent lovers, I don't feed Valentino fully living rodents, but this feeding footage may disturb you. So feel free to look away and simply listen to my voice. Like my ants, Valentino feeds on freshly killed or knocked out prey from the vendor who supplies me the mice. Valentino has refused to eat frozen mice or snake sausages, and I can't stand to feed live mice. Trust me, I've tried. I, in fact, can't stand watching the snake feeding process at all. So filming this was extremely hard, as I too am a rodent lover. I wanted to film Valentino striking, so I relocated the mouse to a different location further from Valentino's stick. He extended outwards, preparing to strike. With just the back portion of his body anchoring him on the branch, he's able to strike pretty far. He moves in. Brace yourselves, AC family. This is it. And BAM! With lightning speed, the mouse was seized, constricted, and completely finished off. Here it is again, in slow motion. Valentino strikes with blinding speeds, required to catch fast-moving prey in the wild. But the worst part is over quickly. These pythons dispatch and kill their prey pretty fast. Once breathing stops, Valentino proceeds to swallow the mouse whole. Slowly, he dislodges his jaw to open wide and begins to work his mouth little by little around the mouse to swallow it. Look at those pits along Valentino's lips. Those are pit organs, possessed by many snakes, which contain a membrane that can detect infrared radiation from warm bodies up to one meter away. Essentially, it allows the snake to have heat vision, which helps the snake locate prey in the dark. Sights like this instill in me a great respect for predation. I never touch or handle Valentino, as he's crazy aggressive, and I heard bites from these snakes are extremely painful, as his teeth are long and stab deep. But other than this, these snakes don't possess any venom, as they are constrictors, meaning they squeeze their prey to death. They also don't grow nearly as large enough to eat a human. He is full grown now, at about 5 feet long, and the largest prey Valentino's ever had was a rat pup, but he prefers two, sometimes three mice, like this in a single feeding, once every seven to 10 days. Despite Valentino's terrifying aura, I actually do love him deeply. You see, when I first acquired him from a local breeder, he was shipped to me via airplane. And when I picked him up at the airport, he was in horrible shape. I'm not sure if he had picked up a virus along the way or if the stress from the flight compromised his immune system, but he had a severe upper respiratory infection, which if you know snakes is very bad news. He wouldn't eat, and he was super weak. The vets told me he had less than a 10% chance of survival, but I was willing to fight for him. After expensive long-term treatments, which well overnumbered his cost, boarding for a week at the vet, weeks of force feeding and oral medication by hand, which by the way, was not easy and extremely scary for me, as I'm sure it was for the snake. In the end, Valentino here came out on top and will be going on his fifth birthday soon. The mouse is completely swallowed and he realigns his jaws. Anybody got a toothpick? He is my miracle snake and has a special place in my heart, even if he is so scary. Alright, EC family, 
And now this final creature is my newest addition to my family of beasts. I see her as my pet baby griffin, descendant of the dinosaurs, who only came to me about a month ago. Her birthday is two days before mine, and she has brought such great delight to myself, the people around her, and hopefully to you, the AC family. I'd like you to meet Ligaya, my baby Congo African Grey Parrot. The name Ligaya came from the winning vote by the Mabuhai Squad, the community who watches my daily vlogs. It means joy in Filipino. I got Ligaya from a local breeder when she was about five weeks of age, still hand feeding three times a day, helpless and awkward, ever curious, and most of all, very vocal. Though I'm not new to birds, I am new to larger parrots like this. And my, has it been a journey so far. I feel like I'm raising a human baby. The rate of development of this parrot has been extremely fast. It feels like I'm speed parenting, as this bird learns new things, develops, and even looks different every single day at this juvenile stage. But what blows my mind is her intelligence. We have conversations. She loves when I sing to her. And she's even showed me that her favorite color is red. Now for those of you AC family who also watch my daily vlogs, I don't want to preempt Ligaya's journey in this video, but I will say that watching her grow from just a helpless chick to a full adult parrot has been one of the most amazing experiences of my life so far. I truly feel like a dad. These animals are extremely high maintenance and demanding, and there is so much to talk about regarding their care. So if you're a bird fan, or even if you're not, do feel free to subscribe to my daily vlogs here, which totally went from a world travel and food channel to a full-out bird dad channel real quick. <laughs> and that AC family is my family of creatures. I have helpful people who come to my place every single day to help me keep up with all the maintenance and upkeep required to feed, care for, and clean up after my ant kingdoms and other pets. Indeed, I am the owner of my condo, so I'm not breaking any property rules. But I am officially starting to make the move to a new home in order to better accommodate my little menagerie of animals and plants. And yes, that includes my ant room. That's definitely going to be a mission. But I know it's possible, and I will surely film the great move to the new space. I've always lived with animals for my entire life, and I find I feel the greatness of life the most every time I admire animals and nature. From dogs to birds, cats to fish, lizards, chickens and bunnies, ferrets to sugar gliders, scorpions and spiders, frogs, newts, a potbelly pig, and of course, ants. Learning their ways and experiencing them firsthand for me is the most fulfilling thing ever. Any of you guys out there pet lovers too? Let us know about your pets in the comments. I'll see you guys again next week, AC family. It's Ant Love Forever. AC family, did you enjoy today's episode? Pets make life a lot cooler and less stressful, don't they? I'm positive next week there will be lots to report in the ant room. So hit that subscribe button and bell icon now so you don't miss out on the continuing ant stories of the ants in my ant room. And hit the like button every single time, including now. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you want to watch the crazy full feeding of Valentino, warning, it's not for the faint of heart. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Two weeks ago, we asked, name one precaution taken during Olympus' construction aimed at avoiding mistakes from the past Titan colony. Congratulations to first name, last name, who correctly answered, you made sure the plants had no snakes. Congratulations, first name, last name. You just won a free book handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what are the pit organs for on the lips of some snakes? 
Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.